Gym Makers presents the Beyond Brilliant Broadcast, where we empower ladies and leaders to shine in their brilliant zone. Join your hosts, Dr. Nicole Steele and Dr. D. Parker, as they share their secrets to help you gain clarity, build confidence, and unleash your courage. If you're ready to get connected, gain insight, spark your creativity, be inspired, and embrace your brilliance. Welcome to the Beyond Brilliant Broadcast, where we empower ladies and leaders to find the clarity, confidence, and courage to shine in their brilliant zone. I'm Dr. Dion Parker, the Courage Catalyst, and honey, I am that hand on your back that pushes you out of your comfort zone all the way into your courage zone. And I'm always joined by the ever so fabulous Dr. Nicole Steele. Tell the people who you are, girl. Yes, I am Dr. Nicole Steele, the confidence coach. And I am that voice in your ear reminding you of who who you are and whose you are. So, oh my goodness, Dr. D, you know, there comes times over the over the last three seasons of the Beyond Brilliant broadcast when we hit up on a topic or up on a subject that one show or two shows is not enough. Mm -hmm. And so I tell you this fabulous uh, mix of brilliance in this virtual space today is here because we have a conversation that just keeps going and going and going. So I can't wait for you to sh to share with our viewers what our topic is today and yes. how we got here. Exactly. Oh, hello. Now, if you just jumped in and joined us, and this is your first time seeing our Beyond Brilliant broadcast, well, welcome in. If you just jumped into this series of this entire se session or season series, <laughs> I mean, my goodness. Listen, there's a couple of episodes that you've missed. You need to go all the way back and watch them because this is the 50 and fabulous club, the 50-ish because then up, because we got a couple of ups in here that have been given some wisdom, right? They have been dropping some gems up in here because I because I just entered into the 50 and up club. And so that's how this all started. They gave me advice unsolicited at first. And then <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> I got my pen, honey, and I'm ready. So again, <laughs> if you don't have your pen, honey, go get your pen and a friend because these ladies have been dro dropping some wisdom on you. So the last segment, the, I, can't, I can't even get it out. It was so funny. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Linda, y'all see her, Dr. Linda Truesdale. So let me go around the horn. We've got Dr. <laughs> Natasha Anderson, Dr. Cynthia Harper. We've got Dr. Linda Truesdale and Dr. Audra McDaniels joining us once again. Dro <laughs> Drop the mic. I'm going to call Dr. Linda, shared a story with us about how she thought her sexy was gone. She is 66 years old is what she has yes, shared with us. And mm -hmm. she told us... <laughs> That she tried on some lingerie that just didn't quite fit her. <laughs> lingerie turned into lingerie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but she said, someone gave her some advice that said, if you just got a different size, you know, the pate could have continued. <laughs> So we're going to pick up our conversation, our whole series, or excuse me, our whole segment today is all around passion and relationships over the age of 50. And what does that look like? Are we still sexy? And Dr. Cynthia had asked a question also around being single at this age. That's right. Because this your girl is single too. Yes, single, single. And so just want you to understand what's happening up in here. So let's start that conversation back off. Should we continue, yes. Dr. Nicole? With I think we should. And <clears throat> Dr. Cynthia, you asked a question during our last show. And I screamed, stop, stop, stop. Because it was such 
a deep question that we really need some time to unpack. We didn't need to run through and try and rush through it. So can you share the question that you posed during our last show? Absolutely. I, I, the question that I asked, because I can't imagine unrobing in front of a man because my body's not the same body. I've got some rolls and some drops and some flops. And I just, what do you do for the married women? How do you handle that? Well, let me, let me just tune in real quick, real here, right here. Unless you are a cougar, chances are his body don't look the way. Hello. <laughs> I cannot. Well, that's no. Hello. <laughs> Ain't no shame. No shame in the game. I mean, really. I that is. I don't mean to make light of your question because it it is. I mean, it's it's real. You know the things that you, the way that you look. I don't know if any of you all have ever walked past a mirror. I've walked past a public mirror. Listen, and I've been like, yeah. <laughs> right. Who is it? What? What? Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. You know what I mean? So we talked about it in previous episodes. Our bodies are changing and it can be challenging when you know, as Dr. Natasha said, you fit fit one size, you know, for a long period of time and now you're two and three sizes up. Mm -hmm. Or like mm -hmm. Dr. Arger said, you got multiple sizes in your closet. You right, know, right. Right. You, it just depends on the day. But at the end of the day, I think there is a way to embrace it and to know that you're not dead, honey. You're not That's dead. Right. You know, I have a girlfriend and she's in her 60s now <clears throat> and she's single. And she talked about, you know, just be just rejoicing that certain stuff is still alive. <laughs> you know what okay. I mean? You, it, arousal is still there. All yeah. of those things that God put in us are still there and there it's about being with someone who can appreciate who you are where you are and provide you with what you need as you as you yeah, well i know you're single right now i'm talking about right now i'm talking about right now <laughs> come, on with it, come on with it dr nicole I yeah know but you know you you learn you learn we are evolving That's and right. let me say this let's just be real honest here because we grown this is not for the kids but things that used to take you places when you were young, they don't That's do right. anything. That's you, know right. I mean? you know what I mean? You have to know where you are and what you need at every stage and phase of your life. And hopefully someone that you allow into that space at that appointed time, that, that, that king, that boy, is that person that God has for you, he will be able to embrace and love you and all of you. All of you. Jim, 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 Jim. I love what you just said. And let me, let me say this real quick <clears throat> about the rumples, the bumples, the dimples, and the stretch marks. Yeah, Come on. They, 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 are, they are a part of her. Yes. I, for my, my 50th birthday, at the beginning of the month, I celebrate the ooh, month. So <laughs> beginning July 1, I said I was something I've always wanted to do, but I was a little scared because I, I was a little nervous because of, again, the rumples and the bumples. I wanted to do a boudoir photo shoot. I had seen it. I thought how beautiful. And these women are confident in, in their bodies and to be able to do something so precious. So I found someone, big shout out to boudoir by Rhea, who actually does this, captures women in their essence all ages and stages of life. And one of the things that was a rule when I went in there was you can't speak poorly about your body at all. There's no, 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 no. Embrace every rumple, bumple, dimple, all of it. And I think what it does, what it did for me was it, it really, it really took my mindset and said, you know what, this is the body I have right now. I mean, I can't, I can't get my 20, 30 year old body. You know, now there are some women that, I mean, y'all look fabulous out there. They're looking, you know, in the gym. I'm in the gym, but I am who I am right now. I have to embrace it. I don't always like it. I don't like my tummy and all that kind of stuff. But what I did realize is that I'm still, I'm still sexy. Mm -hmm. I'm still sexy, <clears throat> regardless of what that is. But, in, but I had to like it first. 
I had to embrace it first. And that inner confidence comes through. So when you do have your Boaz, <laughs> that you're comfortable in your own skin. And so will he be, right? Right, right. <clears throat> because really, when he finds you, he finds you at the size that you are now. He's not looking for that size 10, 12, 8, whatever you were comfortable then. <clears throat> and so if you have the mindset that I can't disrobe in front of him, you know, that causes an insecurity for him as well. Because it's like, look, I I, I, I saw you with your clothes on. I know what size you are, you know, and I'm not coming looking for a size two. I'm looking at you. And so then you're freed to be able to truly give yourself to him without any thoughts. Oh, what is he thinking? Oh my gosh, he might be thinking, oh, I'm just ugly. My body is just this, this, that. But you have to give yourself the confidence to say, you know what? When he found me, he found me at this size. And I actually, what what we have done is there, you know, because I still, well, I now have times more often now than I've ever had before have had those times where I'm like, mm, I'm not a, I'm not as confident in my body as I once was. And so I'll just say it out loud. Like today is one of those days where like, I'm not feeling it. Like I'm not feeling all of this. And, and I'll just let him know that. Right. Because it's me being fully transparent with my partner. So like about how I'm feeling mm -hmm. and then it gives him an opportunity to navigate or not navigate if, if he's not like okay i don't even, you know i'm not trying to do all that like i was just trying to get in get out whatever you know um, but uh you know but he at least i'm giving him a choice like hey this is where my mindset is that's right um but the other part that it does for me um you know and well the other part of my mind says look joker right these stretch marks because I had your babies, right? This uh -huh. C-section scar that's across here that I did not want birthed your son, right? So you better love all of this, right? Because I didn't make myself this way. <laughs> so, so, so that's the other part of it. And I've been very clear <laughs> with him about that as well. Um, but I think it's also when you're talking about passion and, and love and being in relationship with a guy and being able to show him your body i think for me it's like realizing that it's a gift in any shape that it's in mm. it might just be a little bigger gift than it was um, it might look a little longer a little shorter and whatever else but it's still a gift and so when i when i think about it that way then i'm like oh this is a good darn gift <laughs> tonight is a tonight is a you unwrap me slowly and then tomorrow night might be a, you take your time. Yeah. <laughs> that is good. Oh, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> it's, it's real song. Just well, I can tell you from uh, my, my situation is my husband is always complimenting me and telling me, even though I feel like Miss Piggy right now, he's always telling me I look absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I, I, that always re, you know, just helped me a lot. And so, um, I think when you find someone that loves and adore you, um, mm -hmm. the adoration is very, uh, serious in a marriage. I mean, uh, people can love you. Your husband can love you, but you must have adoration as well. That's right. And so because he, uh, shows me adoration, mm -hmm. uh, he always reaffirmed me when I may have a moment walking past that mirror, like Dr. Nicole said, or um, like this past Friday, I think I went to try on something and I sat in front of the mirror. Why did I do that? So I actually sat down in front of the mirror and I was like, oh my God. Um, and then I got frustrated and didn't want anything that I tried on. But um, in this stage, I think with this additional weight that I have on me, uh, I think what's been helping me a lot is the fact that my husband does reaffirm me, tell me I'm beautiful, um, all those th all of those things. And even though I know um, those things, but you struggle some days. Um, and like I said earlier, I have several sizes. And what I'm learning to do is just to embrace where I am until I can get to where I would like to be. Yes, so that requires me to buy different sizes. If that's what makes me feel good at the moment, I don't have a choice. I got to be the best version that's of myself right. yeah. at the weight that I am and know that, you know, I do have clothes waiting <laughs> on me when I get ready to lose the weight or whatever. 
But I'm learning that in the stage that I'm in, which I'm actually in a stage of grief, I'm giving myself permission because I know that I am going to get the additional weight off of me. Um, but I'm going to try to look the best that I can That's right. while I'm here. Yeah, whatever That's you right. all that we can really do is to try to be the best version of yourself. Now, again, I had to go up in sizes. I got a couple of sizes. And rubber is my whole best friend as far as the stretch pants as well. Like, you know, listen, some some leggings right now, the moo moo, all of the stuff we named, these things become your best friend along with the fans. So mm -hmm. yes. I to embrace right. all of my best mm -hmm. I um, love that, Dr. Audra. I feel confident when I'm wearing the right size. Yes. Right. You know, when you when you're in some pants that your muffin top falls over, you know, and you're trying to squeeze and you don't feel comfortable and all that, I don't feel confident. But when mm -hmm. I'm in my right size and my clothes fit me, I, I don't worry too much now about okay, yeah, yeah, we're a little bit thicker, but it feels good, right? So I think. When when we embrace our bodies, I think it goes back to what you're saying, um, understanding that we will have seasons where we don't like what we see, but then we embrace what we have, right? We embrace and love what we have. And I think it goes back to the conversation that we were having about clothing. You know, mm -hmm. what does that look like? What do we wear? You know, right. we're over <clears throat> and, and still want to be sexy and feel good and confident. That doesn't mean you have to be frumpy because That's you're- right into a season that you're older and and uh, that no that doesn't that I, I refuse i'm just say that that is yes. not to be my story that's right <laughs> me. That's you know, i know for me like you know i got the muffin top i had a cesarean so i know peplum blouses are my absolute favorite because they give you coverage right in that middle section mm -hmm. and so again it's all about being creative cynthia you are a fashionista being very creative on how you dress, you always look absolutely amazing. Yeah. Everything that you wear suits your body. Um, I know you're a little hard on yourself, but you look absolutely amazing. Every time yeah. I see you, um, just like the glow you had on you this past Saturday and the green, everything that I've seen you in, whether you've been up or down in your weight, um, to be honest with you, I don't focus on that. I just focus on how well you look in your clothes. Right. You always look amazing. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. the situations of life will bring forth different things. You know. Again, I'm in a season of grief and I noticed that my weight has been fluctuating. I lost 30 pounds before uh, mm -hmm. my mother passed away and then slowly but surely they creep back up. But I know that I can get the weight back off. That's the good part. That's is right. that we can yeah. get the weight off. But God revealed to me once I get the weights off of me, yes. that I will get the weight. Off. That's right. Yes. That's right. right. And that's so true because I went from when I met my husband size 10 and at my highest, I was uh, almost 300 pounds, we're in 24, 26. And through the whole process, I would always ask him, even when I was a 10, why do you love me? And he would say, because I want to. And mm -hmm. even at 297 pounds, I could say, why do you love me? And he says, because I want to, I choose to. But I had to learn to adjust with all that weight, how just being together made just you have to learn to readjust and not get so down and out that you're just feeling like, oh, I'm just this big, fat looking pig kind of person when he never um, had issues with my weight. And it was just more more. The issue was I want you to be healthy than anything mm -hmm. because the weight was making me unhealthy. So I did. I ended up having gastric bypass. And then I went back down to that size 10, 12. But then I had to go through that whole mindset all over again yeah. of being small because I had been I was this big person for a long time. And then I had to go through with being small. So the adjustment even in in our relationship um, with with the weight loss and the way the relationship was being th almost 300 pounds that I had to continually tell myself that you have to be okay with you, Linda. And so you do, yes. you go and buy the clothes that are gonna make you feel good until you sit down and look sideways into the mirror. <laughs> and then it's a different story, but then that's okay. So you stand up and you you turn your th the thinnest side on and, and you're okay. But it really is, if you've got somebody that truly, truly loves you. And I mean, my children, the people that were in my circle, accepted me at every phase, but I had to accept myself as well. And when I got to that place, then it was now let's do something about this for my health more than anything. Well, I think that's, I the, 
that's the other part of being in a relationship is that, you know, the relationship we have with ourselves is the most important. That's right. Um, Absolutely. So the external ones are, you know, your, your, your husband, your children, your friends, those, those are secondary, secondary. because this one, the one you have with yourself is primary. And for you, when you get here and you're having all these things that are happening to your body, there's the, there's the mental and there's the spiritual and there's the, there's definitely the emotional, all these things are happening in your body. Like for me, there are times when I absolutely have to get still. Like I can't, it's like, I can't hear. It's too much. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm out of whack. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that looked like, you know, like, a, uh, you know, somebody had said earlier, like, you know, mom is crazy. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so, so for me having moments of quiet where I can hear myself, and and get in touch with with the father then then i'm like okay all right i'm i i remember um who i am and you know all the good the bad and the ugly parts right but i remember who she is and i like her you know like i like me and i have to remember that so then i when i leave that space then i'm like okay i'm literally like it's gonna be what it is and i'm okay with that it is. That's rekindling that relationship with with yourself. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Nicole, um, I know you want to get in here because I keep seeing your, your <laughs> finger. So I want to get the mic over to you, honey. So go on and get on in there. Well, I just want to I want to hone in on something that I, it kind of goes back to the initial question. And it, it, it even ties into what you were just saying, uh, Dr. Natasha, and that's intimacy. Mm -hmm. You know, when we think about intimacy, it's it, think about the word in to me, mm -hmm. I see into me, I see. And so when we think about the first relationship being or the relationship with ourselves, we have to be very honest. We have to allow God to do the healing and make us whole yeah. and do we got to do that work with right. us first because we can be married to someone but we set the standard if we yeah. don't feel really good about ourselves and i'm not talking about the sometimes because we all have off times and off seasons but if right. this if we are broken if we're not right. whole, yes it shows up in our relationship yeah yes. then when you enter into a relationship with someone else Cindy, you know, when we were, well, I ain't going to speak for you, but but for me, <clears throat> I ain't always been saved. And, saved. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not proud of it. I'll say that. I'm not proud of it. But the things that were important at one stage and phase is mm. different. And so yeah. when you, again, Cynthia, as a single woman, as your Boaz finds you, yes, you are so much more than your physical body. For and your sure. relationship is not going to be based on that because mm -hmm. real intimacy comes. It's the whole yeah. thing. It's the yeah. communication. It's being able to be vulnerable in that trust in that person with yourself you're the prize baby and That's so right. if he has has um if he has found himself worthy of this prize yes he is he <laughs> is receiving so much more than the physical Amen, honey and it's, trust it's me about letting him into a space where you can come and even if yeah. you don't feel like the 16 year old titan da, 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 Cynthia, that you know from Kingsville, you are still a bad mama jamma. And trust me, I, I get that and I understand that. And I know who I yeah. am internally. That's yeah. why I love God. Yeah. People often accuse me of praying a long time. That's my equalizer. That's my peace. Mm -hmm. See, some people can start their day and they're done. Just get up. If I don't spend an hour or so with God, I'm in trouble. Me prayer too. is my I'm equalizer. Yes. So I have so prayer is really my vitamin. So mm -hmm. I know who I am, but I, I I do wonder, it's been so long. Um what 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 is it like? Um yeah. Yeah. you know, when you unrobe and and it's really the one, you know, and like baby, this is it. Um, like you said, 
he good. He's gonna be good with this. Is it? Cause it's, he probably not right. like. It's it's gonna 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 be be mm -mm good. It's gonna be Campbell. I love it, Doctor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because he, yes. when I looked at his stomach the other day, I bust out. <laughs> I'm like, oh, buddy, baby. Yeah, buddy. That I thing, love it. That used to be the ripple. It's a balloon, but it's okay, baby. I'll All right. Well, tell the truth. Listen, men age too. Men it's age too, baby. And their bodies change. Okay. Their bodies change. It's just hard just is right. Yeah. I yeah. love it. But so it actually does go back to that intimacy, right? Because the relate relationships sort of take a turn at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's like. I really like this person. Like, I like, I want to hang out with this person, right? Like, I, I could, you know, so it becomes more yes. than like, I can just jump on him and we can do whatever, you know, it's more like, man, I really want to tell him this situation. I really want to, yeah. you know, let's and read a book together. Let's do the, when you get to that point, it's, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. It's you said yeah. vibe. And let me say this real quick, ladies, because the cuddle, everything. one of the things yeah. that we're talking about is women over 50 and finding themselves in relationships that women that are single. So this yeah. again, y'all, we we I'm telling y'all, we're gonna have to have 50, 15 more shows. <laughs> but because <laughs> I know we all want to get in there. Dr. Cynthia, you brought this conversation to light, and I think there's a whole audience of women out here that are single and over 50 yeah. and they're thinking that it's too late for them. So if that's you and you're relating to the conversation, we want to hear from you right into the show. We want to hear some of your questions. We want to hear some of your concerns. And I think what we're talking about is understanding that it's not too late. That's right. Yes. It's never too late. Right. I'm single. I just, I've just, I'm divorced. I'm newly divorced. I've been divorced for just a couple of years, but I'm finding myself in this season. There's healing after that. Yeah. Healing and understanding you are a whole person, getting to know who you are in this season, over 50 years old. I am embracing her. I'm loving on her. I'm finding her voice. I am doing all the things. I'm allowing myself to right. be doted on and all yeah. of those things, right? So I think there's a whole season for a lot of us who are over 50 and single. So I don't want us to leave this this show and wrap it up and say that there's no hope here. There is. There is lots of hope. There for will be all glory after this. It will be glory. Yeah. There will be glory, there will be glory yeah. after, there will be glory after this. this. I love that. I'm telling you. Well, ladies, we have uh, once again talked our way all the way through this episode. <laughs> And there's so much more to talk about. So I want to meet y'all. Listen, we, listen, we're going to have some wine, coffee, tea, whatever after this and, and continue our conversation. But for you, our viewing audience, we want you to go to beyondbrilliantnetwork.com, become a member of our incredible community. And you too can have a lot of this wisdom, not just mm -hmm. within this broadcast, but outside of it. So thank you for tuning in today. And we'd love to leave you with this. Be bold. Be brave and be brilliant. See, See you next time. Bye. Thank you, ladies. Bye. For more information, show ideas, or to be a guest on our show, please visit www.beyondbrilliantbroadcast.com.